Hello, everyone, and welcome. It's a new episode of the Truth Be Told Minuteman Report with me, your host, Robert Hensley, the Truth Be Told Minuteman, coming to you from an undisclosed location somewhere in North America. I like to call this the bunker. Uh, thanks for joining me today. It's uh, it's a uh, it's been it has been a crazy weekend. I can tell you, um, a little uh, a little worried uh, after a report. Uh, that came out last week and uh, decided that uh, we needed to talk a little bit about that today. Um, so our topic uh, for this afternoon is <clears throat> the doomsday clock, right? Um, so just because I don't know that how many people understand where this came from, who it is, why it's here. So um, the doomsday clock <clears throat> Uh, was created 76 years ago by atomic scientists to warn against human-made apocalypse, right? Um, and this was um, created for uh, the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists in 1947 by Martel Langsdorf, um, <clears throat> who was an artist. Um, her husband, Alexander, helped to invent the atomic bomb as a physicist on the Manhattan Project. And uh, the doomsday clock was first envisioned as a means to plainly signal, uh, to let the public know um, that there was a very dire and growing existential threat posed by nuclear weapons to the world. Now, in 2007, the clock's countdown was expanded to include all human-made existential threats, uh, which means that the clock now takes into consideration uh, climate change, rogue artificial intelligence, war, and global pandemics. Um, now, uh, <clears throat> the... Uh, The Bulletin of Atomic Scientists was started two years prior to the Doomsday Clock. Um, that was founded by physicists uh, like Albert Einstein and Robert Oppenheimer, uh, who were known um, as the fathers of the atomic bomb. Um, and their formation was inspired by the tragic bombings on uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the little boy and the fat man. Um, <clears throat> they realized that with... Um, atomic weapons, uh, nuclear power, uh, that uh, we were coming very close to the brink of creating our own destruction. Um, they saw that in Hiroshima alone, uh, the dropping of Little Boy killed an estimated uh, 140,000 people um, within five months of the detonation and destroyed or severely damaged uh, 60,000 of the city's approximately 90,000 buildings. Um, they were, um, although they were the ones who worked feverishly to create the atomic bomb to end the war, they were soon um, the biggest opponents to the atomic bombs, um, arguing that um, <clears throat> that to pre pre prevent Armageddon, atomic weapons had to be dismantled and nuclear power needed to be safely monitored. Um, and so uh, the doomsday clock... <clears throat> again, became a physical representation um, or a, an artistic representation, I should say, of uh, how close we are coming to our own destruction. Uh, so now to decide the clock's time or, or where we are on the clock, <clears throat> um, each year the BAS, uh, their science and security board, convenes two biannual meetings uh, each meeting has 18 experts from backgrounds spanning diplomacy, nuclear science, climate change, disrupt, uh, disruptive technologies, and military history. And they get together and they discuss the changing threats that are posed on humanity by humanity. Right. Um, so, again, this is all man-made stuff. <clears throat> um, so to assess these different uh, possibilities or threats... <clears throat> Uh, the Science and Security Board, <clears throat> their members consult with colleagues in their respective fields, and uh, with uh, the bulletin boards of uh, the bulletin's board, not the bulletin board, <laughs> the bulletin's board of sponsors, um, eleven of whom are Nobel laureates, uh, and they discuss what they've come back with after discussing with all of these people and talking about what these threats are, and they agree on 
where the clock needs to be positioned. Okay. Um, so previously, the closest we had ever come to man-made Armageddon, uh, our own uh, apocalypse, <clears throat> uh, was 100 seconds. Uh, and that was, um, and that's in relation to midnight. Midnight being, it's, it's happening. Um, so uh, that was 100 seconds to midnight, and that stayed the same between 2019 and 2022. Um, and that was during a time when there was global political mismanagement in the face of a mounting climate crisis, the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the buildup to Russia's invasion of the Ukraine. Um, so we're, there were all of these things, um, right, that had uh, kind of moved us that close to the apocalypse. Um, <clears throat> the closest that had been uh, before that was two minutes to midnight in 1953, and that was when the U.S. successfully tested its first hydrogen bomb. Um, and the threat of such a weapon uh, propelled a straight forward. Um, now, <clears throat> in recent history, the furthest um, away, because the clock can be set back as well, not just move forward, it can be set back. So if, if strides are made to uh, move us away from the end of the world at our own hands. Uh, they can move the clock back. Um, and uh, in 1991, uh, the clock was notably set back to 17 minutes to midnight. And that was following the collapse of the Soviet Union and the signing of the Strategic Arms Reduction Treaty. Now, what's so worrying about the new report is that <clears throat> uh, the doomsday clock has been reset for 2023, and we are now 10 seconds closer to midnight. We are now 90 seconds, a minute and a half from our own apocalypse that we've created ourselves. Uh, so in just, in just over 30 years, we've gone from 17 minutes to midnight to 90 seconds to midnight. Now, <clears throat> this, is, this is what we're looking at. Um, <clears throat> the um, Rachel Bronson, who is the president and CEO of the uh, Bulletin of Atomic Scientists, uh, said at a news conference on Tuesday, January 24th, we are living in a time of unprecedented danger, and the doomsday clock time reflects that reality. 90 seconds to midnight is the closest the clock has ever been set to midnight, and it's a decision that our experts did not take lightly. The U.S. government, its NATO allies, and Ukraine have a multitude of channels for dialogue. We urge leaders to explore all of them to their fullest ability in order to turn back the clock. All right, so here's the thing. Um, it is Russia's ongoing invasion in the Ukraine, the ever-worsening climate crisis, biological threats as such as the unchecked spread of COVID-19, um, these are all reasons that the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists uh, have um, given for setting the hands closer to human extinction. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, a, it's crazy, right? I mean, really, when you think about this, there are very few problems that we are dealing with in the world today that... Um, that don't have our fingerprints all over it. We have created and are dealing with the majority of our own problems, uh, which is a very, uh, which is a very scary thought. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, Mary Robinson, who was, uh, who's the chair of the human rights organization, the elders, uh, who is also a former United Nations high commissioner for human rights, her statement on this uh, really, um, Kind of kind of banged a gong for me. Uh, the doomsday clock is sounding an alarm for the whole of humanity. We are on the brink of a precipice, but our leaders are not acting at sufficient speed or scale to secure the peaceful to secure a peaceful and livable planet. From cutting carbon emissions to strengthening arms control treaties and investing in pan pandemic preparedness, we know what needs to be done. The science is clear, but the political will is lacking. This must change in 2023 if we are to avert catastrophe. We are facing multiple existential crises. Leaders need a crisis mindset. Um, and she's absolutely right. We spend so much time focusing on 
um, you know, little tiny, our own egos and, and a political parties fighting with each other over, not over their constituents. No, 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 no. We're fighting over, um, you know, party lines, things that don't really have anything to do with anyone except for big business, uh, corrupt corporations, uh, furthering people's individual goals and nothing to do with the health and wellness and the rights of the people who live in their districts and their states. Um, we have, you know, past leaders who have, you know, tried to wipe out every environmental protection law in existence so that we could revert to, uh, exploiting, um, resources which have a finite end rather than investing in a future with renewable resources. Um, and yeah, if, if this scares you, which I mean, I think that's the idea of the doomsday clock. It's supposed to scare us. It's supposed to shake us awake. Um, this, this image of this clock <laughs> looking as if it's about to strike midnight and, and everyone's going to die. Um, it's, um, it's again, like I said, it's, it's very dramatic and we understand, and that's the, the purpose of it. Um, I just hope that someone somewhere is awake enough, and not woke, not quote-unquote woke, but awake, actually awake, physically aware enough to start finding ways of making these conversations real and manageable and to uh, find ways of creating policy that does not get bogged down uh, in this, you know, kind of, immature infighting that we seem to have happening in our own government um and again all of this is my opinion uh, <laughs> i'll say that um so uh that is our uh minuteman report for today again thank you so much for joining me um remember there are three opportunities every week uh for uh new truth be told content in english <laughs> uh, minuteman report on mondays at 3 p.m pacific 6 eastern uh, Bonnie Burkert on Wednesdays with Truth Be Told Transformation, same time, 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. And, of course, Tony Sweet on Fridays with the original Truth Be Told, as always, at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. And now, coming to you in Spanish is La Verdad Se Habla, which is, uh, Truth Be Told, hosted by the Latinx musician Metaphor, uh, which launches on Tuesday, February 7th at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern. Um, and again, that's Spanish language, truth be told. Um, and don't forget to uh, check out uh, parapodfestival.com. That is um, the uh, paranormal conference and festival, film festival, parapod awards, um, stargazing events, all kinds of stuff happening uh, on the weekend of March 31st through April 1st in Santa Clarita, California, uh, Parapod Festival. We've got everybody, man. Like Linda Moulton Howe is being given a Media Legend Award. Billy Carson's getting a Pioneer Award. We've got uh, speakers who've appeared on our favorite paranormal shows like Ancient Aliens and Expedition Bigfoot and Factor Faked Paranormal Files and Ghost Adventures. And um, yeah, these people are amazing, and there's going to be so much, something for everybody, really, at this at this uh, festival. And, of course, you know, your team here at Truth Be Told, we're, we're all over it. <laughs> We've been helping to plan this, and it's we were so excited for people to come and join us. So, uh, again, Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Fridays, new Truth Be Told content. Uh, Parapod Festival coming the weekend of March 31st through April 1st in Santa Clarita. Get your tickets now. Uh, weekend, uh, VIP week weekend passes are only $175, super affordable if you ask me. Um, and, uh, yeah. And until next week, please, as always stay true. <laughs>